Good morning. How y'all doing? So today I have a video for you that is not a tournament game. This is, I think, just a base ladder game, and it doesn't have me in it either. So that makes it different for me anyway. So this is a game sent to me. My, my apologies to everyone from Eastern Europe, because I'm pretty sure this name is from Eastern Europe, and I have no idea how to pronounce it. Wukakshik? I, I don't know. It sounds kind of like Wakanda, so I might just call him Wakanda for the rest of the video. Um, yeah, between Wakakshik anyway and Cratchit. So I think it's a normal base ladder game. Uh, they did the bidding, and Wakakshik accepted a bid for one token and one ring. So here we are. Um, so this is their opening roll. Um, he's got Caliborn's Gladroom, some Elf's Nice Master, decent cards, a perfectly decent roll. Um, Downforce Fall is a little mediocre and a red tile for the Shadow Player and four eyes on turn one. So not ideal. Um, he allocated one and rolled three more anyway. So um, so I don't know what happens in this game. Um, I, I've, I've mentioned a couple of times on the Discord server anyway. Like if you have an epic game that you think is uh, just a really fun one, uh, please send it to me. I'd love to do a video on it anyway. So, so I don't know what's going to happen. I just know that it's probably going to be a fun game. So here we go. So... Yeah, yeah, he mentions that he could use two rings to try for Aragorn. That, that thought crossed my mind as well. Since he has a Dwarven ring here, he could re-roll one of the Muster or Muster hybrid dice. Um, that's what the Dwarven ring is for. So you don't get to pick what you get, but you get to keep re-rolling until you get something different uh, or better. So he could roll this Muster die and keep rolling it until it's something that's not a Muster or Muster hybrid die. If he got a Palantir, then that would stink. But that's three out of four odds that that would allow him to get Aragorn this turn. And then he would also have to use an Elven Ring on this H die here. So is that worth it, though? It's, uh, yeah, that, that is paying a lot for uh, for crowning Aragorn anyway. Okay, so he puts a red tile in. Um, does the standard army movement, sold fourth road on West Mnet, Fellowship moves and gets hit twice. Uh, but it's just a one, so... And he loses Gandalf. So, yeah, that's that's a reasonable choice for sure. Because the, the extra frustrating part about that for the Shadow player is that, um, you know, they had two musters this turn. And because they had so few dice, the Free People's player is going last. So since Gandalf is dead and the Free People's player has a Will of the West, that means that the Shadow player can't get Saruman this turn without allowing the Free People's player to also get Gandalf the White. So... Okay, so the North gets mustered to war, Isengard gets mustered to war, and then we he plays Caliborn's Galadrim. I, I would have been tempted to move the Fellowship again, but I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, he's realizing he could have done that with a monster die, but oh well. Yeah, what can you do? Okay, hey, orcs multiplying again. Always, that's always a happy draw for sure. Breaking, that's decent through a day and a night, and there and back again. There's definitely some potential for some uh, free people's military shenanigans there. That's a good combo. But no will the west, so certainly no odds of uh, Gandalf or or Saruman. Interestingly, no musters for the shadow player either. So there's a bummer for sure. Um. <laughs> okay, so he picked up a strategy card. Uh, geez, what do you do? Okay, he musters Gondor, step closer to war, shadow players move. Um, he moves the Fellowship and gets hit again, and it's a one reveal. So that is uh, that is not good news bears for the Fellowship. Anyway, yeah, like, like, I don't know. Usually my assumption is that corruption isn't going to be a huge problem, but especially when you lose Gandalf to a one and you got hit again on the second step with a one reveal, then that's uh, not lovely. So, anyway. Or it's multiplying again, Fellowship Hides. I'm a little surprised he didn't hit him with breaking right there, just because Gandalf's already gone, so you're not helping him with that. And you have this Palantir, and you can't get much of done militarily this turn anyway, since no one's mustered up. But I guess playing Orcs multiplying again means you can at least, you know, move these armies with your army dice. Okay, armies move. Armies keep moving. Okay, no do line rush here. We are headed straight for Gondor. Okay. Okay. Um, so Shadow Player picks up Shelob and Day Without Dawn. Free People gets Kindred of Glorfindel, and there's another way. Always happy to see there's another way, that's for sure. Okay, so one eye in, no more eyes rolled, one Will of the West, um, but no other movement. So that is... that. That's another interesting question. Do you just go ahead and move, or do you hold that 
and and hold on to your token too so you can do the tempo change and threaten getting gandalf the white this turn um oh he might be thinking about using his dwarven ring that would be a reasonable choice yeah yeah and he gets it into a movement that's great yeah that helps a lot especially like against just one eye in the box like that you definitely want to still move this turn and he's safe for once so that's neat taxos gilead from north athelion Oh, right, right, yeah. Um, and uh, Wakaxic points out that Sauron himself is not actually at war, so that is not doable. Um, okay, so the Dol Guldur army moves out towards the Dew Line, and the Southrons finish getting to Umbar. Now Sauron's at war. And now he uses the token to bring the north down another step. I find that interesting. Because I guess if you attack Old Forest Road, then then you can use the muster to put an elite in Dale, I guess is the thinking there. Yeah, okay, okay, that makes sense. Uh, okay, you play Shelob's Lair. Smeagol helps, nice master. Ah, uh, I see. And the uh, Shadow Player is getting excited for Day Without Dawn here. Okay, so here's Wisdom of Elrond. I'm actually quite surprised that he did that because now that makes it much easier for the shadow player to get the witch king right now but then again i guess like he has one muster and he could get saruman or the witch king so i guess you're not helping him out that much okay so mustering in dale and in comes the witch king yeah another code and sting that's always a great card horde from the east ring is mine why is that three red tiles already or is that only two yeah that's three red tiles in the first four turns that's crazy um obviously that's not you know superb to get early because they don't influence the game early but it's still nice to have them in there for sure okay so one eye allocated two more rolled another muster in dale that is uh that is pretty strong all right when you get to muster that much in dale okay scouts away from desperate battle that feels nice for sure um so what do you do i think i would use this hybrid die to move the two elites and the leadership into Woodland Realm, and then walk the regular into Erebor, unless I already have Dane. No, I don't already have Dane. I think that's what I would do. Mustering even more in Dale would be reasonable, though. Yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, you just do have more boots on the ground this way. But then, of course, he gets to besiege Woodland Realm for cheap. Um, so, yeah. Fellowship moves, and they're safe. Red tile number three comes out. Um, Horde from the East is... <laughs> he thinks about trying to play Horde from the East, but realizes that the Southrons are not at war. So, here we are. Um, okay, in comes Gandalf the White, and in comes Saruman. Okay. Wow, impeccable timing. He picks up Brand Wheel right now. Oh, that is beautiful. Um, Grey Company seems like the obvious choice to throw out to me anyway. Um, probably Threats and Promises, what I would check as a Shadow Player. Yep. Those. which makes another step forward one eye in no more eyes rolled against zero movement oh that is tragic that is i feel that just as the free people's player you just weep you just you just sit there and you cry about it for a while uh okay obviously he smacks down thrand will right away so that helps anyway just uh shadow player is not going to walk over everything this game anyway Salbrons and Easterlings to war. He passes. And we're back. Hi. Okay, so the Salbrons and Easterlings are moving. Okay, they moved to Eastrune. Right, and the Orcs came down to Eagle's Eyrie. That's what happened here. Okay, we moved some Nazgul around. I'm a little surprised he doesn't bother putting one on Old Ford. On old Ford. Like, you know, just to harass the Fellowship a little bit more. Why not? So he musters another elite in Dale. I'm also a little surprised he doesn't put a regular in Carrick just to waylay him. But I guess you're spending a character die to conquer it anyway. So, like, what are the odds? Is a regular really going to survive that? Probably not. So, so, never mind. That does actually make quite a bit of sense. Okay. Now the Sterling's at war. So now the army gets stronger. So now they move into Iron Hills. Yeah, it is a tricky situation for sure. So... What do you do here? I'd be tempted to just, you know, walk a couple of elites into Erebor just to make sure they actually get in there to defend it. Um, yeah, I don't know. 
Or you could walk the whole army over to Erebor and just say, come at me, bro. We'll have a field battle and we'll throw it down and it'll be great. Um, yeah, like that. And yep, yeah, there comes a North Elite to hopefully maybe conquer Angmar. Okay, so Dale is conquered. Uses a ring to move the Fellowship. That makes sense. They're safe. Um, the other army comes in and conquers Carrick. Wow, that is a strong airport. Look at that. 362. That's nuts. Oh, oh, cool, cool. There and back again. So, wait, hang on a second. So there's one movement and plus one. Okay, yeah, so Gimli or Legolas can make it to Erebor. Gimli for the thematic points. Love it. Oh, that's cool. Um, right, and naturally the elves get a muster down from that too. Yeah, putting Gimli on there feels really nice because not only can you get the dwarves to war with one step with any die, but obviously he's a captain of the West and and that leadership on all these hit points is just nuts. That is such a strong Erebor right there. Yeah, so as a shadow player, I'm I'm thinking I will be quite content if I can hold a conquer Woodland Realm and hold on to it. Like if I can keep that two or three points from the dew line, that that's enough. Now I'll go elsewhere for the rest of my points this game. Okay. So flocks against through a day and a night in Woodland Realm. Uh, one hit for the shadow player and two plus one, three hits for free peoples. So that is pretty good luck for them. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you can read their chat, but they're 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 fun people to read the chat for. Um, so he uh, says he's stopping the press. You sure? Maybe you should press legendary elven hospitality. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, I draw Shadows in the Misty Mountains and Wormtongue. Um, I would guess either Wormtongue or Dameth Horse Folly is getting chucked. Yeah, out goes Wormtongue. We have so one eye in, and again, no more rolled, and only one movement this time. It is uh, not exactly a sprint from the Fellowship here, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah minus six on movement. That's about right. Okay, moves first anyway, because, you know, might as well before, uh, you know, a reroll gets put on you. Okay, so we are mustering up some more Saldrons. Yeah, I'm a little surprised that he marches off without mustering another Oliphant first, because what, what else are you going to do with this muster die? Or maybe he's planning on playing Shadows in the Misty Mountains. Uh, just because he's, you know, this hand is just chock full of cards here, so... Okay, so we're attacking one of the realms some more. No card, no card. I'm surprised at no card, no card, because they both have, you know, a full six units. Um, I would be tempted to use Dread and Despair, if nothing else here. Maybe Olakai only get one reroll for it, though. Um, and then as the Free People's player... Yeah, no, really, none of these make sense. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> okay. Um, the two hits from Shadow, that's good. Two hits back from Free People. Um... No press, huh? Okay. okay, so Gondor gets the rest of the way to war. Interesting. Black Captain commands now. I guess you want to get me to Strith under siege before it gets too much mustering done. Um, okay, so attacks us Gilead and, and just wipes it. Just roll three sixes. No big deal. But they also get two hits back, so that helps. Um, I expect Buster to beat a Strith. Yep. Okay. Or we're also going after um, Dual Amroth here. That's uh, that's reasonable too. Okay, attacking Polar Gear, get one hit. Um, okay. So he puts out two regulars, which that makes a lot of sense, especially when you have scouts at hand, because the, they'll attack Labden, and there's decent odds that he doesn't have Swarm of Bats, and you'll be able to at least have a full five units of Dual Amroth, even if none of them are, you know, elites. Uses another ring to move again. Safe. Uses a ring to besiege Dol Amroth. So. That's a pretty cool pivot anyway. Hammer and Miracle Adrial. I would probably chuck I will go alone. And yet, having a Daring Defiance to play when you have a companion uh, on the battlefield like Gimli there is pretty nice. So maybe Kindred of Glorfindel instead. Yeah, Kindred of Glorfindel. Um, Crow Weather, nice. Always nice to see it. Rage of the Dunlopings. Chuck, stay without Don. Yeah, that's reasonable. 
I personally, I, I really like keeping day without dawn, but a lot of people like chucking it just because the threat is still valuable, even if you don't actually have it. Okay, so three eyes, it gets two movement. Fellowship's moving a little bit faster now. They're hit again, so they take four steps. Okay, so it's a two reveal. Uh, random? Or do you just eat it? Yeah. <laughs> random corruption. Cool. Okay. Yep, they're every time, every stinking time, man. He takes the random and it's Strider. Oh, that feels so bad. <sighs> yeah, because that was one in five. <sighs> that, that, yeah. Ugh. Oh, that's frustrating. One, two, three, four. Yep, Southern Rebellion. Um, um, he, he was an old Ford and he had four steps. Is he going to catch that? Oh, Gretchen caught it. Okay, good. Good catch. Because, um, yeah, I mean, as far as I'm aware, no no one really intentionally cheats on the server, but, but we do miss things sometimes, right? It's just... Okay, so mustering up more in Gondor while it's at war. You see the armies coming to besiege Minas Tirith here. Fellowship hides. Um, they attack Slasarnik just to, you know, have it conquered so that they can't muster anymore. That always feels good. Okay, so the Northern Elite is walking his way towards Rivendell. Yeah, that, that, that always feels nice, just a little extra assurance, especially when the North is at war and he can just walk his way right into the Stronghold. Feels good for sure. Now comes Denethor's Folly. Nice. Okay, Saruman musters up a bit. Hammer comes out, raids the Dunladings. Nice, classic combo. So it's interesting to me. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. It works to Moria, and then Shadows on the Misty Mountains, and then you have a solid 8-2 army there. Uh, the question is, where is it going? Because neither Lorien nor Rivendell is a particularly appetizing target right now. Um, like, they're like, with that, regu that elite right there, they're both reasonably well-stocked. So, anyway. Okay, Mazarbol. Oh, very, very helpful. You can use one die to move the door of a nation down one step to get to war. That is so much more efficient than using a regular muster die. That's crazy. I'm very funny. Um, okay, he throws that challenge of the king. That makes sense. A strider just died. Um, I mean, sudden strikes decent combat effect, but Book of Mazarbol getting to move companions around is still nice. Uh, so one eye in, one more rolled, a couple movements. That helps. Um, Fellowship moves and is safe. Out come shadows on the Misty Mountains. Um, north finishes moving into Rivendell. It's a mustering a North Ankh. Fellowship moves again and is safe. Oh, that helps. So now... Oh, yeah, that's actually super frustrating for the shadow. Because if they'd gotten hit and revealed there, then you wouldn't have to play Crow Weather. But as it is, if he uses the ring to move again and gets revealed, then you can't grow weather him anymore. So I think he kind of has to play grow weather right now. Yeah. <laughs> he says, no worries. I'm uh, solid banter here. That's good stuff. Okay. Hill trolls to reinforce Dol Amroth. I'm not sure if that was needed. But... Oh, well, it's there now. It's also... Oh, it's really nice having these three in combination because Hill Trolls gives you that extra two elites and then you can play these We Come to Kill as combat effects. But mind you, having them for the reinforcements is also really valuable too. So, anyway. Guard the Citadel. Lamroth. Yeah, We Come to Kill against advantageous position. Feels nice. Uh, Shadow Roll, zero hits. Free People rolls two. Then Post, two hits. Nice, nice. That's a good We Come to Kill right there. And he presses. Okay. I was almost expecting him to not press just so he could keep using the weak come to kills. But uh, but I guess after those two hits, I guess you don't really feel like you need to do that anymore. And uh, it's nice to be able to save this for, you know, reinforcing something else. So no card, no card. One six for the shadow. One hit back from the free peoples. Um, press, no card, no card. Two sixes from the shadow. And there you go. That's a dead dole Amroth for you. Rohan takes a step closer to war. Uh, Asgul leadership pivots. Again, I'm, I'm surprised that he doesn't put an Asgul on the Fellowship. Just because especially getting those reveals is so critical. Like, potentially game deciding. Like, if you would just put an Asgul on Northern Ravanian and one on No Man Lands, you've just increased the odds of them getting hit, increased the odds of them getting revealed, which, depending on how much dice they roll next turn, uh, could delay them by a whole turn. 
Oh, no, he says actually. Yeah, okay, there you go. So he puts two Nazgul out here, though. Um, but of course, the Free People's player doesn't have to declare. He can just stay there, so there's no reveals there. But, ah, I see. This is part of his plan, though, because he has Nazgul. Or no, did he just pick up Nazgul Strike? He might have just picked it up. I think he just picked it up. Yeah, he just picked it up. Oh, well, still a good plan. Um, <laughs> because now the Fellowship still has movement, so then you can play Nazgul Strike and, you know, hurt them more. So that's always fun. Don't you just love hurting people? Oh, so grand. Okay, Fellowship moves and is safe. Yeah, there we go with Nazgul Strike for the hunt. Um, ah, yeah. <laughs> so he mis he forgets that he has a reroll, and Wakaxic is nice enough to remind him, and it's a hit. Oh, uh, that's frustrating. Zero reveal, though, so that's not. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But yeah, I mean... Like, you're still guaranteed to make it to Mordor this turn because you know there's no cruel weather anymore, so you can still hide and move once, and uh, yeah. Although, interestingly, because he has a sealed or his bane here, he could, in theory, draw one of these two revealing ones, and then you'd have to spend your ring to still, um, you know, have hidden again and then move into Mordor. Um, that is pretty unlikely, though. Yeah, we go ahead attacking Woodland Realm. Great host against heroic death. Two sixes. One hit back. So yeah, heroic death. Um, keeping the stronghold alive. Uh, decides to press and play, I think, another great host. Yep, another great host. So just got him. Up to six points. Nice. Feels good. Fellowship moves again and get hit. Oh my goodness. What? They just get hit three times and pull an eye like it's no big deal. Oh, that... That hurts. That hurts a lot. Right in the corruption. Um, so yeah, obviously Legolas dies and he reveals into the stronghold. And now it's a three. Oh my goodness, that is just absolutely savage. Okay, so out goes Boromir and a Hobbit. So yeah, suddenly... <laughs> uh... <laughs> he says it's his biggest mistake in the game that it's just Pippin in the Fellowship. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so Shadow Armies continue to waddle their way towards their final targets. I imagine this army is coming just to besiege Erebor, you know? Um, probably have a bit of a field battle and then besiege it just so that they can't, you know, so they have a hard time getting out and causing problems. Um, okay, that's cool. Please, I will go alone just to get Pippin off of the Fellowship. <laughs> uh, I mean, that makes you, you know, safe from candles, and it makes there is another way playable next turn. So, yeah, makes a lot of sense. So we attack Erebor. Um, I imagine... <laughs> yeah, I, I was just going to say, like, you picked a, a combat card. Like, technically, you're supposed to wait for the free peoples to say what they're doing. Because um, you could retreat into a siege and, you know, put three regulars and an elite all into reinforcements. But obviously, maximum of five hits clearly staying for a field battle. Um, Muma kill card. Nice. Um, no card, I guess. Yeah, you could play a shield wall here. I, I guess you don't really need to, though. Okay, so Mumakil gets him two hits. Oof, oof, holy moly. Okay, the dwarves are not here to just mess around. They get five hits back. That is that is crazy banana pants right there. Um, yeah, so do you press? That's a great question because now this army of six elites with Gimli is at war um, and they have significantly more health than you now. Jeepers, creepers. Um... So he does not press, which I think makes a lot of sense. Um, Rohan gets closer to war. Well, is there more to muster up from the Dwarven Force Pool? I'm a little surprised he doesn't muster more in Erebor. Because, you know, 
like the dwarves are at war now and there's these armies right here which put together might be able to conquer you but if you you know smack down a few more elites real quick then uh good luck mm -hmm. So he uses a ring to move armies around, yeah, to put together a stronger army in Dale. Well, actually, maybe, maybe Wukaxic is specifically hoping that he'll be attacked again, and then he can retreat into a siege, and um, maybe he's hoping to bait the Shadow Player into wasting his time trying to conquer that stronghold, as opposed to, you know, going somewhere with this army in Moria or this army in Orthanc which are closer to, you know, less insanely well-defended strongholds. <laughs> Fellowship, no choice. Okay, so one eye in, no more eyes rolled. Um, okay, so now we do muster more in Erebor. And now we play Breaking the Fellowship, get one corruption. Fellowship hides. In all four red tiles. Here we go. <laughs> Exciting stuff. It is a big hunt pool, though, so it's not super likely to hit a red tile, but um, <laughs> you may never see one red. I may never see the light of day. <laughs> um, okay, the will of the west to just move forward. I'm a little surprised he didn't just open with there's another way because you could, you know, play that with the Palantir, and then if you hit an eye on your second movement, then it does less damage. But, oh, well, a three um, reveals makes a lot of sense. In comes the mouth. Um, mouth is coming for Lorien and for Minas Tirith. I guess he wanted to save his plant here for playing a power too great. And obviously you can always play. There is another way next turn. Um, so here's the fun question. Yes, he does. Okay, he does have cards he can get rid of that with. So he could chuck um, a Sealder's Bane and either Deadly Strife or Half-Orcs or Goblet Men to uh, polish off power too great. And we're back again. Um, right, Power 2 Great just got put down. Nazgul Leadership pivots. I'm a little surprised he doesn't just, you know, discard Power 2 Great so he can besiege Lorien right now. Because I think it was Celeborn that was played, right? Um, yeah, it was Celeborn that was played, like, back at the beginning of the game. So you know that if you can discard that and besiege it right now, that he can't make it any stronger. But if you wait, and next turn he rolls a muster and musters up, now it's a five-unit stronghold with an extra elite in there. So that, that would be my temptation anyway. Uh, Mita Strength is obviously something that needs to be worked on too anyway. Okay, in comes Gandalf to defend against um, the Witch King here. So that does work because he cancels the leadership. It's a bit of a bummer that you're throwing him under Denethor's folly, though. Because that means you can't play any cards to protect him. But at the same time, yeah, like there is no other leadership here. Although little does he know that the Shadow Player has Half-Orcs and Goblin men, so he could at least get an Isengard Elite there for one leadership. Okay. So here we go. Minas Tirith shines. Uh, Deadly Strife. Four hits. Okay. Yep. Just Deadly Strife. Here we go. Let's kill Gandalf. <laughs> Um, five hits back anyway, but the shadow player is very happy with that. I'm sure like he has eight extra regulars here for backup, you know, whereas, um, four hits is not easily replaceable for, for the free people's player. Did, right. He had guards of Citadel. He already played him. That's, that's right. That's what happened here. Um, okay. Asks if he's pressing. I think he does. Okay, we press, and he rolls two sixes. That is good. That is very good. Um, three hits back from the Free Peoples. Um, okay, so now he'll stop, and yeah, now he can bring in reinforcements. Interestingly, the five regulars from Dole Amroth start walking out to go help attack Rohan. It's not often you see that. It's not never, but it, it just, uh, just caught me by surprise anyway. Um, okay, and now... MT and quite possibly kill him. Um, do you play Onslaught here? Do you play Great Host? Um, because there's a chance that he plays Heroic Death here, but there's another way. Is essentially a free movement, so that, that is very expensive for the Free Peoples to 
try to hang on. And obviously then Gandalf is, is gone and you don't get your die for next turn. So yeah, great host makes a lot of sense. Oh, and obviously the free people's play can't play a card because down throws folly. Get out of here, Bob. Um, okay. Zero hits from the roll, two hits back from the free people's, um, one from great host, um, press. Death for a battle. That's a good card. Onslaught would also be great. I think I would play Onslaught here just to just really make sure we kill Gandalf, just so that the Free Peoples has one less die for next turn, you know? Um, I mean, Desperate Battle will still probably get it, but just not as certainly. Yeah, Onslaught, here we go. Rolls a six anyway, so it doesn't need it. Um, yep, and there goes Gandalf. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a tough one. It's it's always so it's it's frustrating when you put in Gandalf gambits like that because sometimes it does stall out the game and it wins for you. Like especially when you're canceling all the leadership for a big strong stronghold like that. And then yeah, and then sometimes they just smack down a deadly strife and you just die. It's yeah, this game has a lot of a lot of gambles, a lot of toss ups. So one eye in along with three more and three pull out here, so that's frustrating as a shadow player for sure. Um, <laughs> but also almost no movement for the free people's player. So, okay. So he hides with the will of the West. I think that makes sense. Um, okay. So he checks shadow is moving and sealed or bane to discard power too great. I expect. Yep. Now muster and Lorien. Uh, yeah, this is this is a weird one. This is a weird one for sure. Um, okay, Orthanc musters up some more. Okay, attack forwards, get a hit, one hit back. Off the Besiege Helm's Deep. Oh yeah, and now Saruman doesn't have to be scared of Ents because Ents aren't playable now that Gandalf the White is. Adios. Okay, Helm's Deep besieged. This for Coat and Sting out. That always feels nice. Ring rates are abroad. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I hadn't uh, looked up at the what do you call it words. I hadn't looked up at the victory points in a bit. But yeah, all he needs to do is conquer Helm's Deep here, and uh, yeah, then then he's got it. So yeah, Ring Racer Abroad is a per the perfect card for that. You get to bring extra leadership in. <laughs> uh, that being said, the Free People's player can still use a ring to attack Dale, and they have a. Um, let's see, five, ten. They have a two hit point advantage and leadership is equal, but they also have a captain of the West ability, but the shadow player has, um, the defensive advantage. So it would be a tough fight for sure. But yeah, if, if, uh, the shadow player successfully conquers Helm's Deep, then that is the, that is the guaranteed win. Yeah. So I think what the shadow player should have done here is actually play half orcs first or draw a card first with the Palantir and then we'll let the free people's player take their last move first and then try to conquer Helm's Deep. Because this way you're letting the free people's player know, like if your siege succeeds, then the free people's player knows that they have to. But if you leave you taking your last two points for the last action, then the free people's player might, you know, just carry on in peaceful oblivion thinking they have another turn and then wah wah, gotcha. So, anyway, um, but yeah, we come to kill is definitely a strong card effect here, assuming you have you know, some elites left. You know, like the army is just fragile enough. Like if you take any more than two hits, then you don't get your full five rolls for we come to kill anymore. So anyway. <laughs> okay, shadow rolls one six. That's good. Three hits from the free people's player. So that's that's not bad. Um, so you still get four from the post. Whiff though, not a single hit from the we come to kill. Yeah, that hurts for sure. Uh, presses anyway in the hopes of taking this stronghold anyway. It's not very likely, though. If he'd gotten, like, two hits from that, then this would be possible, but zero hits uh, doesn't feel great. So I would probably play Swarm of Bats next and then Desperate Battle. Yeah, Swarm of Bats against Daylight. That feels good. I just roll five sixes, and you're good. Two sixes, though. That's pretty good. Um, and only one hit back from Rohan. That's that's frustrating, for sure. Um, so press, and then Desperate Battle, and just get four hits. Oh, Horn Dark. That's right. Oh, that's perfect timing. 
That's very good. Good stuff to save the day. Um, one hit from Shadow and three hits from the Free Peoples. So, yeah, that definitely ends that siege. Did he take? Did the Rohan guy die? Yeah, okay. Well, they lost a Rohan regular. So, yeah, now it's three regulars versus three regulars. Um, yeah, good luck. And now here comes, there's another way. Heal one and take a step. Um, so I imagine the Shadow player would be very excited for an eye here. There's five eyes in there, but it's a big pool. It's a zero, so that's delightful. Just delightful. Um, okay, so, yeah, this is tight stuff. Um, the Shadow player just needs two more points, but they also need to, you know, not lose Dale. So I imagine what's going to happen is that this army is going to swoop down on Rohan and hopefully take out Edoras and Helm's Deep um, and... You know, then say, you can have Dale, that's fine. I'll protect Woodland Realm and win that way. Um, ooh, but the Free Peoples rolls for movement. They could win this turn. It's not impossible. <laughs> they move, and it's an eye. So that's a two reveal. Um, so now it's less likely, but they could still hide and then move twice. And as long as they don't hit a red tile or another eye, then they can still win this turn. And they do have Mithra Coat and Sting on board, so that helps. Fellowship Hides. Darmon Muster some more. Interestingly, if he kept Day Without Dawn and played it right now, he might have won the game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know. He's uh, regretting putting Gandalf the White in there. So Fellowship moves again, and it's Smeagol Helps Nice Master, so that is pretty crazy. So, yeah, now he just has to take a step and not hit two reds in a row with Mithra Coat and Sting. So, oh, that's frustrating as a shadow player for sure. When you're when you're this close and you're up 10 dice to four. I'm a little surprised that Wukoktek is passing here at all. Like, why not just move? Like, you're clearly going to try. Yeah. I guess, no, no, yeah, clearly, because this army, they, he has plenty of movement to walk over Edera, so you might as well just move now. Oh, oh, he's showing that he could spend a ring to muster two regulars in, and that would... No, but he's clearly not thinking that through, because all he needs is Helm's Deep. Those two regulars aren't going to stop. Oh, no, I think he's saying he could have used his Will of the West to do this instead, um, to slow that army down from getting at us, and then also use the character die to retake Dale. Okay, so anyway, in come the armies. Uh, Helm's Deep. Nice, Devilry against advantageous position, feels good. But he just rolls three sixes anyway, so <laughs> yeah, there you go. Um, but yeah, the shadow, the Free People's player almost for sure has this. Um, so he moves, and... Okay, well, technically he hadn't actually moved. No, wait, yes, he did. But why is... His person, like, they moved the Fellowship to the Cracks of Doom without putting his die in the hunt box, which just seems a little bit odd to me. Usually that goes like that. So he does draw one red tile, um, but good thing he has Mithra Coat and Sting anyway. Okay, yeah, there we go. Now it is. And there's another tile, and it's an eye. So um, so that's four corruption, but that puts him up to eight. And, uh, and yeah, he wins. So, yeah, crazy game. That was, uh, that's exciting when you get, well, not actually nine corruption, because that last one only just went in, so it should be eight corruption, but. But anyway, um, yeah, a very strong Erebor. Um, a good holdout in Helm's Deep and an epic final sprint up the up the Mordor track. Very close stuff. Um, yeah, overall, Free Peoples is still minus four on movement, but plus five on H's, so that helps. That, get, that helps you get a mess like Erebor anyway, yeah. <laughs> um, so this doesn't show us the combat dice correctly. It has the bug in here where... Everything is on one player's side. So according to this, Shadow Player rolled zero combat dice and the Fleer People's player rolled 249. So uh, clearly that's both players. But plus 12 on sixes, so that's probably helpful for Shadow overall. Um, plus three on Palantirs, though. That doesn't help. Um, but yeah, that's uh, the right rolls at the right time makes, uh, makes a difference. So yeah, anyway, it's a cool game. Uh, see you guys next time.